Welcome back to the cold mini performance workshops. Tonight I thought I'd give you a brief rundown on the car behind me, otherwise known as Austin. Uh, ahead of a short sequence of videos I'll be doing over the next three weeks probably. Austin is a 1963 850 which I've had for it could be going on for 10 years now it's probably longer than what i think um it was bought sight unseen off ebay which is always the best way to buy stuff um it was supposed to be 850 according to the guy i bought it off uh, but when we got it home and checked the engine number he'd written it down wrong and it was actually an mg 1100 uh, which was knackered uh, along with the rest of the car which was basically all finger tight we uh spent some time going over the car making sure it was safe uh, fixing all the bodged wires uh, you know the usual sort of thing just wires twisted together with a bit of tape on them uh, but it didn't fix the smoky engine uh, so we decided that we'd combine all the parts we had at the time and build an 8-port so having decided to build an 8-port it was probably a good idea because when we took the MG 1100 motor out it fell apart so it followed the pattern of the rest of the car. Things inside the engine were only finger tight. And in fact, the uh, pr the flywheel bolt and the lock washer and all that lot was all loose and fell apart in about three different pieces. So it was uh, a lucky escape really to get that engine out. So I put the 1380 engine in it. It was an engine I'd had for 15 years probably sitting on a shelf based on a S motor and uh, I just chucked the 8 butt head on it and ran it on air miles for a while so it happily ran on the air miles for quite some time until I realised that I could never get them properly set up and about that time I, I don't know exactly what year it would be um, Mini Spares brought out their fuel injection kit so I bought one of the very first kits that came out on the market I had to get rich uh, mini spares enough to put it on the stock system so I could buy it it was that fresh and it's done perhaps 9,000 miles I think on that 8 port motor um, it's only had one oopsie right at the start um, the on the water pump side I have one of the engine mountings that goes from the water pump um, to the bulkhead and it's not designed to clear an A-port head um, it needed cutting and re-welding and what had happened is when I tightened the head down the uh, it hadn't properly sealed and I blew the head gasket so that meant I had to uh, have it uh, you know skimmed and stuff to make it to make it right the issue with that is though that this was a A-port head that we've had for Oh, a long time since the 90s definitely so you're not far off 20 years now hmm yeah not far off 20 years somewhere in about that region early 90s I think perhaps and it was on Christopher had to start with and those original uh, mini spares castings didn't have a very big combustion chamber in them I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. I think it might only be about 14cc or something really low like that, or maybe even less. So combining that with the 8-port motor, well, not the 8-port, the 1380 motor underneath it, um, which had flat-top pistons in, the combustion ratio on this engine now is approximately 13.7 to 1 and uh, the people that know these things say no no you shouldn't be running it that high well i agree but at the time i just chucked it together and the combustion ratio worked out at what it worked out at and that was the end of the story apart from uh, when it starts and it's a bit sluggish on the starter motor you wouldn't notice 13.7 compression ratio it doesn't have real hard bark to it um, and it just idles like a sewing machine. I spent a lot of time working on the uh, DTM map, getting that right, getting the cold, cold starting still isn't 100%, but it changes that much to the atmospheric conditions that you can't get that 100%. But the uh, the cold start, once you get it running and warmed up a little bit, it'll just sit there and idle. Perfect AFRs, absolutely beautifully. 
Um, but, but, and it's big but, I had um, a less than optimal gearbox under it. What it was was the uh, 1128 style magic wand for synchro box that I had converted by Guessworks into what they call the hybrid box and that uses A plus gears in it and uh, I think the final drive was supposed to be 2.9 or 3.1 or something like that on a twin pin diff um, although I did think that I didn't get the final drive ratio that I was expecting because the speedo was always miles out and the drive gears that I'd ordered to go with the gear box didn't although they should have been correct according to Guessworks' website the speedo was always miles out and I did some checking with the GPS and stuff GPS speeds against revs and that and it worked out using the spreadsheet on Guessworks' website that the final drive I thought I had and the one that was most likely in the car didn't match but anyway that's beside the point uh, the problem with the A plus gears was there were a really wide ratio and combining that with the magic one style uh, gear change which is the gears are over there somewhere everybody hated it everybody hated the gear change on the car and the uh, the spacing between the gears so that is the reason why the car's sitting in the garage here with no engine and gearbox in it but we'll get to that later i'll just walk you around the rest of the car first so this is Austin's interior on both sides it's got the work style um, boxing with extra gauges in on the left hand side here I've got a Brandt's uh, rally trip although it's not working yet and it's got the sensor connected onto the speedo drive cable which is the one that was originally in Bumblebee before I changed to the fancy speedo with the electronic drive and stuff uh, usual dials and gauges in the middle there uh, uh, you know temp oil pressure it always has good oil pressure this engine um, standard speed or still and then over this side we've got a, a rev counter volts amps and uh, oil pressure Smith's oil pressure gauge um, I'm changing the uh, oil temperature gauge sorry the oil temperature gauge I'm changing that now from being in the sump plug where it was always a pain in the ass whenever you wanted to change the oil to in the filter head using one of the DSN filter heads uh, the rest of it inside here is pretty much uh, conventional radio because you can actually hear the radio in this one it's got a six point safety devices cage and normal comfy seats these seats we're not entirely sure what make they are we think they might be new commercial ones they came in the car with the rest of the interior um, but the very nice comfy seats and uh, the rest of it is uh, pretty much uh, as, it, as it came I haven't done much at all the only thing I have to do now is sort out that hole down there and um, blank that off because obviously I'm going to change the gear system and I'll have to mount it back here you can see by that rough ass welding on the floor that it's had some uh, floor pans in it at some point in its past they're actually quite solid um, they just don't look very pretty and the uh, fresh coat of green paint is something I've put in while the carpets are out I've just uh, rubbed down any surface rust that was under the carpets and under the sound ending and uh, giving it a quick once over just to spruce it up a bit and get rid of the surface rust that was under there it wasn't too bad but it um, it made sense to do it while the carpets are out and the car's in bits brakes are the uh, standard Cooper S size 7.5 inch and then it's got the mini spares alloy calipers on if you look at the caliper there that's where the catch on your wheel weights if you've got stick on weights in the wrong place on your wheel. Wheels on the car are the 5x10 GB alloys that it came with when I bought it. I think I'm on the second set of uh, A008 since I bought it. 
they don't last a massive amount of miles but they're uh, really good tyres the only thing they can't cope with is snow at the back we've got uh, reversing light there and you can see the exhaust poking out it's a manifold well it used to be a side exit but I uh, cut it and re-welded it and made it into a homemade center exit upswept system if you know what you're looking at there you'll know that that's the sign of an MPI tank uh, it originally had the five and a half gallon in but when I changed to the eight port I originally had the uh, full mini spare system which is an external pump but that was just like way too noisy so I soon ditched that and changed to an MPI tank and it's uh, lovely and quiet which is what I do in all these conversions now I never use the mini spares external pump setup way too noisy for a road car suspension wise it's got red dot cones which are a recent addition after the old original cones shrank down to something that was about that thick and it was all lopsided uh, I've got uh, negative camber bottom arms on everything's all adjustable suspension and uh, gas adjustables I think they're 21 or 22 point adjustable something like that and they're set really soft and it rides the bumps quite well quite not quite as well as uh, Bumblebee does yet because I think the cones still need to settle a bit more it needs a bit more mileage on it but uh, apart from that it's been a good reliable car up until the point that I decided to change the engine and gearbox but we'll talk about that in the next episode as per usual if you like these videos click the like button hit subscribe and any questions or comments fire away I always reply